Hello and welcome to Frank's School. Here's something seemingly more hands-on than what I've been talking about uh, recently. This is the sixth year, uh, 16th day, uh, first video and only video, I think. Uh, the sixth year is, is going, in a way, it's, I, I'd say it's going to be all over the place in the stuff I'm going to teach. I don't know exactly where I'm going to go. Uh, various directions, but that's another matter. What I want to show is kind of a discovery I made. I want to share it. Uh, I want to share it soon, actually. Air hose as a drive belt. Well, this is air hose. It's what you use when you put air in your tire. Uh, high pressure, uh, you know, uh, air hose. Uh, it can be a drive belt, but let's back up. Uh, a flat belt. Here's a flat belt. Uh, you know, when, when you want to take power from one shaft to another, uh, flat belts are an old way of doing it. This one's rather stiff because it hadn't been used for a long time. And, you know, how do you, how do you splice it? Well, there's various ways, but there, there's actually a, a little tiny machine that, that, that does that, that puts these clips in there. You run them together and then run a wire through and there's your splice. Uh, in the old days, uh, they were used uh, all, all the time, uh, uh, usually out of leather. This one's out of uh, canvas. Uh, and I have this sort of fond memory because uh, when I was a kid in, in New Hampshire, I almost living in exile, I lived in New Hampshire. I'm from Pennsylvania, but I had buddies and we'd ride our bikes down to Page Belting uh, when it was closed or on a Saturday or something. And we'd go down and raid the trash. And I didn't, I thought, page belting, probably made belts for pants, I didn't know at the time. But I knew that, that in the trash there were real nice pieces of leather that were left over. See, they were made, uh, belts were made of leather. Uh, uh, the finest of them were made out of leather, and that's what they made, obviously. And those pieces of leather we could use to make slings, you know, we were kids, and pretend we were David killing Goliath or something. Anyway, that was in Concord, New Hampshire. Now back to uh, flat belts. Uh, they go over flat belt pulleys. Now here's a flat belt pulley. It's all rusted. But that's not a problem because it'll grip better. <laughs> it'll polish right up and there'll be more friction as it goes over that. One of the things I liked about flat belt pulleys and flat belts is you could grow your own. These can be and were made out of wood. Uh, you can make them out of wood just fine and then turn them on a lathe. And the flat belts leather. You could grow your own beef, make your own leather. In theory, you could grow your own everything you needed. Well, the shaft is, is a sort of another matter, but in any case, that appealed to me. You could grow your own, and I just showed you how they were spliced. Well, a V-belt replaced pretty much flat belts. Here's a V-belt. I don't know if you can see this. Well, I'm, I rather hope you're familiar with V-belts. Uh, they're, they're smaller, they grip better, they're, they're well engineered, and they go over V-belt pulleys. Now here's a V-belt pulley. This one is on a, there's a bearing inside it, but usually they, they go on a shaft and, and the V-belt lays in there and, and they grip really well. I mean, they're all in cars and everything, you see them everywhere. But then how to splice, how to splice if you have a broken one or you don't have the right length. They're expensive. Uh, how to splice them. Can they be spliced? And yes, they can. Uh, I just this morning watched a video where a guy showed, I'll probably give you the link. He showed how he would take one and cut it and basically would run a wire staple. So he'd cut it on a scarf, I think you'd call it, <clears throat> and basically run a wire staple through there. Did a real fine job and showed that you know, when you're not as demanding, when you're not uh, dealing with as high speeds, high power, high torque, uh, they can be made, I mean, it's clearly better to have one that's manufactured like that and it's the right size, but they can be spliced. And he said in his video, he says he, he has uh, uh, maybe a hundred uh, V-belts, I do too, I just didn't throw them away. I thought maybe someday I'll find out a way, and I did this morning. Uh, so they can be spliced. And there are also round belt drives. Uh, a round belt. The, the, and an advantage to a round belt is it can turn, it, 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 it can snake a little bit better. A V-belt is meant to drive only one way. It's not, it's not meant to drive the other way. Whereas a round belt 
can drive either way. Uh, and in a treadle sewing machine, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen one nowadays, you don't see them much, but those were usually round belts. And in Brazil, I remember seeing or learning how to splice them, and that was easy. You just, because there was so little power or torque, you just would put a little staple there between it and it would work just fine. Uh, a word about that too, you know, in the stuff I've talked about before, <laughs> villagism, let me, I think I'm going to start using that word more, villagism. Uh, the, well, it's all kind of related, but when you drive down a car, you may be driving an engine with a car that's got 200 horsepower uh, and, and uh, you know, so much power, such high speeds, and the world that I'm sort of building uh, is so low. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I deal with fractional horsepower, a third, uh, a third of a horsepower motor, or, or I think a, a person can come up with one twentieth of a horsepower. Uh, and yet the, the artifacts, <laughs> it's funny to call them artifacts because they're all around us now, modern, that are left over or will be left over from that time of exorbitant power use, they're, they're made for that real big high speed, high power. Well, good, that's fine. I mean, they can be used. You just slow things up uh, uh, and uh, make, make things better. <laughs> Well, anyway, uh, so rope drive is maybe the oldest form of this that there is. I mean, I don't know if some caveman, well, yes, uh, that, that caveman that would use start a fire or make a, what they call it, a twist drill uh, with a bow or a bow drill, they call it, that would in effect be rope drive. Uh, he'd maybe use a, 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 a leather thong or something. Uh, but but rope drive and and you know how do you splice it? Well, splicing rope is not that hard to do, but it makes a thick spot, and it is tr a little tricky. I, I mean, it, it it's an art splicing rope, and and you'd want to be sure to get it right. So it dawned on me that I would try. It was just to get a, a distance, a length of a very long uh, drive. Uh, uh, well, I'm going to use the, 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 the saw, saw blade, the bandsaw blade as the drive itself, but, but I wanted to, to put it all together and I thought, well, I, I got a lot of air hose. I had a sale for about $5 or $1. I bought all the air coat hose I could really carry. Nobody wanted it and it was all left. And uh, I had that and I thought, well, I'll just cut a piece of air hose the right length. And then I thought, well, how to splice it? Usually air hose, if you're going to do it right, there, there's, there's that. And I, I took his, you know, that goes in there. And then there's a, a hose clamp on either side, and that makes a splice, and, and the pressure can still be there. But that obviously isn't going to work. It's going to make a real stiff spot. It won't go over the pulley. And, of course, the, 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 the hose clamp would, would catch up on the pulley, so that wasn't going to work. But then it dawned on me that why don't I do this? I took a piece of electrical cable, uh, electrical wire, that was just the right length, uh, thickness, and I pushed it in there. Now to cut that, there was steel in there, and I had to cut it with a cold chisel on the anvil on the cutting surface. Don't don't cut don't don't do it on this good surface of your anvil. But there's a a plate or there's a section for cutting. I had to cut it on the anvil because of that steel. But anyway, I stuck it in there. I pushed the two together and yeah, I can get it there. And you want to make it really tight. And then you might think, well, won't that pull apart? <laughs> That's so tight I can't find it. Oh, there it is. Yeah, well, it'll pull apart. But, uh, but you know, you could put more in there. But, but also the point is it's flexible. It's a flexible spot. And then what I haven't done yet is you could lash it with wire on either side, like lashing the end of a rope, something I learned in Boy Scouts. You could lash it and you could make it tight enough that it'd actually be stronger than the rest of the belt. So I thought, you know, I want to share that because there's probably air hose or garden hose. I mean, if you wanted to have a bigger drive, I don't see any reason why you couldn't do a similar thing with garden hose. Uh, what I actually need is something a little smaller, uh, you, you know, the, for, well, for a bigger V-belt it would be all right. 
but uh, but I, so I'm not going to throw any more hose away. And I wanted to, I just wanted to share that with you because I sort of felt like, aha, a discovery, a way to use something else that otherwise might be on its way to the landfill. So air hose can be used as a dry belt. Bye for now.